Good morning, guys. I hope you are all well. Today I am here to talk to you about this pattern and these threads. Yes, it is a long overdue video about my conversion of And a Forest Grew. I have the first four pages done and so I'm going to go through the colors that I used so far and let you know what I used. So I hope you enjoy uh, and let's get to okay, it. Okay, so this is what I have done for the first four pages. This is the first four pages of uh, Forest. And I thought now was a good time to share with you the colors that I used rather than waiting till the very end and um, doing the whole lot, which would be a lot. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be adding much more colors than what I already have. Um, what I have done is I have, that's the layout there, so I, that's, this, these are the four pages that I did. And what I did is, um, I'll just use this one for an example. You see, for that color, then I would put a number by um, what, what color I used. So that was 36, so that was Carrie's Creations Autumn Leaves. So that's what I did. For every symbol that is different, I wrote a number. And then on the back of the, the chart, I wrote who the silk was by and the color. So as you can see, I have, so at the beginning I was re repeating the colors and some of them are DMC colors because rather than using the color they suggested, I would just pick another DMC that I preferred. Um, but most of them are like different threads. So there is Moe's Silk, there is Fiberlicious Silk, both in filament and a spun. Crescent Colors, Wildflowers, Fibers to Die For, which is uh, Canadian based and out of Calgary, uh, Thread Pickers, Carrie's Creations, um, what else do we got here? DMC, and I think that's it. I think that's it for now. That's all I have right now. So that's the list right there of everything that I've used. So I'm going to set up the floss. I'm going to pull the floss out and then I will direct each each thing that I did. Um, well, maybe not each thing, but you know the ones that are pointed out uh, that are obviously different. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I am ready. And I'm going to be going back and forth on my notes and I'm going to be flipping the chart which you can't be seeing. So, But I'm going to let you know um, what is what. For this trunk here, I used um, fire. A gate. Is that how you say that? Uh, it is a uh, fiberlicious filament silk. And uh, so that's what I used for that. Um, green bean is for this one, which is Moe's silk. Okay. Um, this one here for this green. I used a water flower, which is a thicker silk. It's not a silk, sorry, it's a cotton. But it's a thicker thread. So rather than using two, two threads, because this is on 18 count, so it's two over one. But because this is a wildflower and the thread is thicker, I only used one strand um, to give that effect as the same, like so it's not so thick. Like, I don't mind it being thicker, but I, I don't want it to be a clumpy mess either. Um, so, 
that was just one thread, one over one. Whereas everything else is two over two over one. Okay. The uh, there are some that are there are some places that are as charted as well, and I just like kind of added uh, a color in where I felt it was necessary. Uh, in no way, shape, or form have I planned this out ahead of time. Uh, I'm kind of doing it by the by the seat of my pants. I sit down to do, you know, my page, which is my my goal for the month, and then I look at each each tree, and I decide, and I look at all my threads. So when I when I sit down to do to do this, I have all the threads out that I can pick from, not as cleanly as this, but I do have them all sitting out so that I can rummage through them on the table and it's a great big mess. Um, but that's okay because it's just there for while I'm while I'm doing my stitching session. And then I can pick through the through the colors that I think would go good with that particular tree. And then I try and balance it out as well. Um, and uh, see what what looks good and where I feel I need like a pop of color such as such as this for those of you who are stitching this you know that there is no such thing as a purple tree in the in the chart just the and so I'm just adding bits of 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 different things quirkiness to it where I feel it's necessary and then a lot of them I'm just substituting a thread color that that was very similar to what's charted but it's obviously different um this one is grassy it's a mohs silk and that's grassy this one here um the way it is a autumn woodland it's from fiberlicious and it is a spun silk and the way that i stitched it i stitched it in a circular motion so I st I don't know where I started, but I would I went around like this, and then I went kept going in, and in and in, and that's how I got that sort of a weird, sort of a look to it. Um, these birds, if anybody's stitching these birds, they know that there's probably about I don't know four or five colors that they want you to use in in the birds, and I felt that wasn't necessary. So what I did is I used Manor Red, which is a Crescent Color Works, and a Fibers to Die For Smooth Operator. Now, in no way, shape, or form would I ever suggest that you go and gather all these threads to do this. What I am suggesting is that you guys who have large thread collections, get out your threads and use them where you can substitute them rather than using DMC because what's the point of buying them if you're just going to have them in your boxes and not use them. So whatever it is that you have, throw it in there. Like whatever chart it is that you're doing, throw it in there. I'm not ever suggesting you, you accumulate these threads specifically for this chart. Uh, this is just threads that I have collected throughout the years that have just been sitting there and not being used and I I just I my priorities are changing and I just really feel like you need to use what you have so that's what I'm doing so don't ever think that oh I need unless, unless there's a color that you specifically like then yes go buy it but don't ever go buy all these threads just so that you can do the chart this way for instance if you have a beautiful autumn color like this like this tree this tree is this autumn leaves and I and I looked at the tree and I thought this needs fall leaves because it looks like it's blowing and I live in Canada where the trees turn color in the fall and so I fit really felt like I needed to add a bit of that to the forest so that's what this one is. Um, this one over here, I know I'm jumping all over the place. This one here is, I felt I needed a pop of color or something a little bit different. 
And that one would be sea moss from Fiberlicious. It is a it is a um, cotton, and this is a cotton as well. And um, this fox is as charted. I didn't want to mess with the integrity of the fox. And this these trees are as well. This tree is as charted. And what I did with this one is I just flipped it around so that they're not the same, but like. You know what I mean. And what else can I show you? I'll show you everything. But so these these berries, I don't know what they're called. That is done in a thread picker's coral. And I have this thread from when I did uh, the the um, diagonal rainbow the rainbow one. You know the butterfly twisted band sampler so that's the leftover from that so that's where I've used that um, the, the little birdies here the baby birdies are done in bonnet and the mummy birdie is done in let me just double check so because I have a couple of grays over here that I know I used 34. Yeah, this one. So I used, oh, let's just get this out of the way. How do you say that? Camp. From Moe's anyway. And uh, so that's the, the mama bird. And I think the beaks are as charted. The leaves are 32. I'm gonna have to excuse my flipping back and forth. Carrie's creation double shot. No, that's the um that's the brown, the double shot be this that's the and the leaves are oh, I'll just I can just tell just by looking it's chestnut another Mohs silk I have quite a large collection of Mohs silk and fiberlicious um, so that's what a lot of this is and uh, here's the collection of browns that I have. There's this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, which I haven't used yet because I think I'm going to use it on a part of the tree trunk. The tree trunk. And, and this one. But then I also use some of the, um, some of the DMC for the browns as well because I, you have to have a variety of different browns. Um, this one here again is this just the same one. Uh, the only way, reason you're getting a different look is because of the thread change. So like if I didn't get to the, the thread, the darker part, then you would get to the darker part later on over here, which is okay. The birdie here is done in thread pickers again, which is just called blue, which was a part of the, um, Twisted Rainbow. This one here is uh, Opal Galaxy. So for this one, I stitched it going this way, and then this one I went this way, and then this one I went this way again. So it all depends on how I how I stitched it up. Um, the yellow, any yellow that you see in here, is done with. This fiberlish, uh, fiberlicious silk topaz. That's the yellow. Um, again, this is the uh, the same autumn leaves. And see, I'm gonna I'm going to try and put this throughout the pattern so that it just kind of fits together. The butterfly is an obvious other difference one, and I used. Um, I think it's called Pink Agate, which would be this one. 
It's a thread pickers. It's a thread pickers. I know it's not labeled, but I know that it's a thread pickers. And anybody who has thread pickers knows that she labels them like this. So that is that one. Um, for the um, for these, they are purple in the chart, but I had my own set of purple blends that I used, um, which is this. So going from lightest to darkest. Uh, they're the Carrie's Creations. So even if you liked the purple upgrade, um, uh, you can do that. Um, this one over here would be, I think it's Easter Grass. Here's the back side so you can see a better um, variegation of it. Easter Grass from Mauve. Um, again, the red and the trees is the red manner. A lot of these colors are repeated throughout the whole thing. The tree, the purple tree is this, this one, which is a silvery raspberry. It's a fiberlicious. I try and add as much as that I can. Um, what else did I want to show you? Oh, these little trees here are done in, um, Carrie's Creation Harvest Moon. And a lot of the trunks as well, I, I cut out the brown part and I will use the brown part for a lot of the trunks. And then I will cut out the orange part for, you know, the leaves and stuff. And I did that for this and up here as well, I did that. And the owl is different. Um, I just used DMC and used white and and gray there's there's just you know you just gotta and I think the the legs and the eyes and the beak are all the same um, what else can I show you I think I will just oh there's this one here where I just used a green and then I just added the blue, which would be just the, the, the um, thread pickers. I'm going to go through all the colors right now and just show you the colors that I've used. Um, you might like the colors and decide, hey, I want to buy that for my collection. But no way do I say buy these all these threads for this particular chart, like I said before. So there's Casket from Threads to Die For. They are out of Calgary. Hickory Stick. Double Shot, which is a Carrie's Creation. Timber, Crescent Colors again. Here's a Fiberlicious. Purple Variegated Fiberlicious. Silvery Raspberry. Another Crescent Colors, Red Manor. You guys are probably familiar with these colors because of various charts that ask for these. Um, another thread to die, fibers to die for. They're very soft. Um, sea moss. Again, I, I would highly recommend if you guys like fall colors, variegated fall color, that this is a really awesome one. I really, really like the way that this one turned out. Another good one is uh, Fall Leaves. Um, she doesn't make it anymore because it's a filament silk, but it's Fallen Leaf from Fiberlicious. Um, here's another good one, uh, Harvest Moon. It's only yellows or oranges and browns. Here's a light, a light brown, which is the uh, Fire Agate. This one's pretty cool, Autumn wood, wood, no, Woodland. And it's a spun silk, so it's from Fiber Delicious, so that would still be available. Um, oh, over here is a Moe's Walnut. It's another brown one that I missed out on. 
We got the coral, we got the bonnet, we got this one, we got that one. So I used smoke and some of the brown, like I used it in like this rat. And uh, this one would be Almanzo, because it's more of a shiny rabbit. So that would be Almanzo, whereas this is a more dull one. You can tell that that's, a, that's a, the smoke. Okay, so that's Almanzo there. Here's old blue jeans, which is uh, the birds. And here is the opal galaxy that I showed you. Here's the golden sun. I think I used that here, I had a yellowness here. And of course here is the, um, the wildflower. I also used elm, grassy, Easter grass, which I showed you. I used Emerald City, ju Deep Jungle, these are thread pickers, uh, Green Beans, this is a Fiberlicious that's called uh, Pistachio, it's from Fiberlicious and it's a, sp it's a filament, Leek, Moes, and um, Aspen, Moes, here's a, another assortment of Greens from Fibers to Die For, which is the Sleuth. Mrs. Peacock, here's a Fiberlicious one. Deep Forest, another Fibers to Die For, Detective, and Cape Caper. And then here's the, the purples that I used. And that is it for all the threads that I have used so far in And the Forest Grew. So that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know that I went through it quite fast. I don't want this to be a bazillion hours long. Um, but if you have any questions, you know you're always welcome to uh, put a comment down below or message me or, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, just don't be afraid to use your threads, guys. Add them to your charts, whatever chart it is that you happen to be doing. Just add add a color in there instead of a DMC. You got the threads. I'm not saying buy the threads just for it, but if you got the threads, add it in there. It's fun. I'm just doing it by the fly of the seat of my pants. I don't know what color a tree is going to be, except for on the day that I'm stitching it. So I hope you guys are having an awesome stitchy month. I will be back at the end of the month for my whip update, and I will see you guys then. Take care. Bye-bye.